Garage. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Automotive Aerodynamics with me, Gray. So in a previous episode we looked at the aerodynamics of convertibles and I used a Honda S2000 as the example car in some of the analysis. And I promised an addition which would be looking at the spoon hardtop, which I think is a great aesthetic addition to the Honda S2000 and uh, people are adding it not only for the great aesthetic appeal but also for the aerodynamics. And so I thought I'd take a look quickly at what the spoon hardtop does for the Honda S2000. What kind of aerodynamic addition and benefits can you get from this? And so let's take a look together and come up with some conclusions. So let's just quickly remind ourselves what the arrow looks like with the hardtop down. On the left we have the movie showing the instantaneous velocity and how mixing and turbulent it is and on the right we have the time average and then what happens when we have the OEM top up so now we have the OEM hard top and as you can see the the aerodynamics drastically changes we have a smaller wake we have a totally different flow structure as seen in, in the time average on the right and uh, so the OEM hardtop does change the aero, it does decrease the drag by about 18% from my estimates, uh, which should increase your fuel economy by about 9% on average. But uh, you know, can we do better? Can the spoon hardtop do better? So now it's down to the meat and potatoes of the discussion. We have the OEM hardtop on the left and we have the spoon hardtop on the right. Will the spoon hardtop increase your aerodynamic efficiency? Will it improve your aerodynamics versus the OEM hardtop? That's what we want to know. Well, these are the experimental instantaneous images stitched together to form a movie showing the unsteady aerodynamics of the, you know, the flow moving past the Honda S2000. And what we can immediately see from these images is that the OEM hardtop is much more unsteady. You can see large structures that are being shed from the vehicle. And on the right, with the spoon hardtop, this is not happening. And this is due to the high rake angle of the OEM hardtop. They needed to keep that rear trunk, so they had to really sharply you know, make that angle for the, the back end. And this is shedding off large structures. And so what does this mean for the aerodynamics? Well, what this means is that you're going to have time varying forces on the car. Because you're having structures being formed and shed in an unsteady manner, the forces will change in an unsteady manner, and you're going to feel this as buffeting, especially at high speed. So this shows that the spoon hardtop will be more stable at high speed. You'll have less forces being transmitted through the steering wheel. It's going to be easier to control and more, you know, more reliable at high speed. So beyond that, let's take a look at how it affects the drag and the lift. The biggest source of drag for vehicles is that it creates a, a very large wake of low pressure, and this is because they are bluff bodies. So we can estimate and we can visualize this wake by the low velocity flow at the back end of the vehicle. So for this case, with the experimental data, it's going to be the blue and the green wake behind the vehicle. As you can see with the OEM hardtop, this wake is fairly large. And again, this is because of the very sharp angle of the back windshield. With the spoon hardtop, where you have a nice smooth transition, this wake is much smaller. So what this means is that your uh, drag due to pressure losses in the flow is going to be smaller for the spoon hardtop model. This means that you're going to have a lower drag, a higher top speed, and more fuel efficiency with the spoon hardtop. Now let's talk about lift. To estimate changes in lift, we need to look at departure angles at the rear of the vehicle and see is the flow being directed upwards or downwards when it leaves the vehicle. So let's look at the time average results to get a better understanding of this. So here we're looking at the time average experimental results and we get these results by taking the movies that we showed previously and averaging them in over time to look at how the average flow structures and flow patterns behave around the vehicles. So we have the OEM hardtop on the left and the spoon hardtop on the right. Now what can these pictures tell us? Let's look at the OEM hardtop first. So it's kind of an interesting flow structure for the OEM hardtop because of the very short back end and the sharp angle of the rear windshield. 
um, you have kind of an interesting structure where the flow does want to separate from the roof, the rear end of the roof, but sometimes it does appear to reattach along the rear trunk and then separate. And this is what causes that unsteady time varying flow structures that are being shed downstream, which we talked about previously, which caused the change in forces. So when you time average it, you don't see one or the other. You don't see fully separated or fully attached. You see a combination of the two and the end result is a picture like this where you have the two flow structures at the rear end by the rear taillights, but then you also have this sort of third interesting kind of pseudo structure along the rear windshield and rear trunk. But as you can see, the flow does tend to you know, fully separate. Um, and so you do have a situation where the car is not really generating any lift or downforce. So if we now compare this to the spoon hardtop on the right, what we can see is that the flow remains attached along the back windshield much longer, and this is because of the much shallower, gentle slope. Now the experimental velocities are not as high as on the highway, and I didn't necessarily model the rear slope perfectly, so you do still get a kind of a funny structure with periodic separation just before the rear spoiler. But what we can see is that because the flow remains attached longer, and because it has this sort of rear little spoiler that I modeled, the flow is directed upwards you know, at the back, back end of the vehicle, and this is gonna generate some, some downforce at the back end. Now, if I didn't model that rear spoiler, if I just had the gentle slope, the flow would remain attached and it would actually be directed towards the ground, more so than the OEM hardtop because it has that fully separated or partially separated flow. And what this means is if you add the Honda S2000 spoon hardtop with no rear spoiler, you will actually increase your lift. The flow will be directed more towards the ground. The car is acting more like an air airfoil. It's actually causing lift to be formed. And so what you're gonna have is a case with lower drag and higher lift. So if you add this spoon hardtop, I would recommend adding a small rear spoiler or a rear wing to redirect that flow upwards and this will increase your downforce you know the same as the OEM hardtop or even more. So the conclusion from our findings is that the spoon hardtop will decrease your drag and it will make the flow more stable which will decrease your buffeting at high speed. However you do need to add a rear spoiler or rear wing to make sure that you don't generate more lift than the OEM case. So I hope you enjoyed this. Stay tuned for more episodes and send me an email if you have any questions or recommendations for future episodes. Thank you and please subscribe.